the attendance at an alternative high school in the fictional town of Rosa Blanca, New Mexico. And he said, she had her head tip down, so I couldn't see her face real good, but I knew it was Beecher on account of her hair. It's the exact same color as the car I stole once. <laughs> Bronze metallic. <laughs> says, I like this kid. Oh, he says, we didn't cross the border, mijo. The border crossed us. <laughs> <laughs> next to each other and grabbing each other's arm and laughing and pretending like they care what each other's talking about when really they were just checking out the dudes. <laughs> All of a sudden, this one girl, she was standing up to the side by herself, not like she was stuck up or shy, just like she was the kind of girl who could stand alone and not care about it. I was so busy looking at the girls, I didn't even realize I was walking till I got halfway across the floor to where the teacher and the girls were standing and then I could see that all alone girl's eyes. She was looking right at me, not even pretending she wasn't. And I'm not kidding. The lights brightened up like the sun was shining down through the basketball hoop. And the sunlight sparkled on that all alone girl and made her shine like an angel. Just like in the movies. I used to think they made up all that romantic shit, but that was before I got struck down by love. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I realized everybody was looking at me, including the teacher who was this little gordita lady. <laughs> black, stretchy shirt and pants and high heels and little pink socks with lace around the top like a lady wears. And she looked at her clipboard. She said, I'm Mrs. Martinez. She must be a daughter. I could hardly make myself stop looking at the girls and look at that teacher who turned out to be Mexican. Her far away, you couldn't tell because of her red hair, but up close, you could tell she was born with black hair. But she didn't look like one of those many families who tries to make themselves look Anglo. She just wanted to look special. I could just see her in the back of the dollar store, choosing those little pink socks, humming a little song, smiling, doing a cha-cha on the way to the cash register. <laughs> Mrs. Martinez made all the boys in class dance with all the girls. I touched more girls in that 45 minutes than I did my whole life up until that day. It was one of the best days of my life. Nobody knows me in TRC, so maybe I could just start out being intellectual over there. I could try it out. So I took off my bandana. I shaved my three chin hairs, which probably didn't look as cool as I thought they did. <laughs> then I told everybody my name was Eduardo instead of Eddie, and I started right out beating straight A's. Nobody even tried to kick my ass. This one kid named Francisco, he looked at me hard and he shoved me a couple times, but I didn't fight, so he left me alone. And I gotta admit, it's actually easier maintaining a reputation as an intellectual than as a juvenile delinquent. I wasn't sure if I would like being an intellectual better than being a juvenile delinquent, because being a JD got to have advantages like the teachers usually don't call on you. And sometimes, if you walk up to an Anglo guy right in the middle of the daylight in front of Taco Bell and ask him what time is it, he'll give you his watch. Because <laughs> he thinks every Mexican is gonna mug him. <laughs> to shake, even though he's not a regular bachelor. He's a park ranger. He's real buff and everything, but half the time he talks like a college guy. And the other half of the time he talks like a weirdo. He works with a whole bunch of Anglos. He thinks it's real funny to copy their accent. So he likes to go around saying things like, get her done. <laughs> and I was thinking when I go to his house, bachelor food, cheeseburger, pizzas, burritos, and beer. And no, Tio eats. Organic brown rice and vegetables. And he drinks some kind of herbalized tea. It smells like old socks. But after you drink it, it makes you feel smooth and calm. He doesn't watch regular TV neither, just PBS and BBC. It's for principals. Theo got more principals than anybody I know except for Lupe. He says the television rots your brain and the commercials make you think you want stuff. They make you think you need stuff that you don't need it because you wouldn't even know it existed if you didn't see it on television, so how would you need it? <laughs> and he doesn't go to football games on the weekends. He goes to places like antique stores and poetry readings, which I never heard of. People going and listen to poetry and purpose. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if Teal or his puppy was adopted. <laughs> Like Tio knocks on the door before he comes in my room, 
Poppy never knocked on a door in his life. If he wants to come in the room, he'll come in the room because it's his house that he built with his own hands for money that he busted his ass to learn. So if he wants to walk into the room, he'll walk into the room and you better shut up. <laughs> and me and Poppy don't do so good in the conversation department. Like he's always asking me stuff like, why don't you tuck in your shirt? Well, for one thing, if I tuck in my shirt, I look like a boardroom. Because my <laughs> pants would be all full of shirt. <laughs> short shirts to wear a necktie like Harry Castro does, I could look like I sell insurance. <laughs> if I wear a shirt like that, I will get my ass kicked so fast. <laughs> but if Harvey Castro wore a shirt like me, he would lose his cool, just like that. But Poppy is too tired to sit and listen to a long answer like that. So when he asks me something, I usually just look at my shoes until he says, Oh, never mind. What's the point of talking to somebody who never listens? Tio listens. He listens to everything and he'll talk about anything, even real personal stuff. Like last week, we were on the way back from Rosa Blanca to TUC after we visited my family. And we didn't even talk all the way from White Sands, all the way across I-70 to where the Oregon Mountains start to look real sharp and pretty. We were listening to this band called Caliente. And all of a sudden, Theo just turned on the music and he said, you know, Eddie, it's okay if you're still a virgin. He <laughs> <laughs> said, who makes you think I'm a virgin? But I didn't want to hear the answer. <laughs> so I didn't say anything. Theo played a little drums on the steering wheel and he turned it down even more. He said, you know, Lupe reminds me of your mother. Which made me wonder how many beers did he drink up back with puppy. <laughs> smartest girl in the whole school, as sharp as a razor blade, and she was so hot she sizzled. <laughs> when your father met her, I was so jealous, I wish I met her first. And I was thinking, I don't know, I'm trying to picture my mother as a hot babe genius. <laughs> he said, she could have been anything. She could have gone to college, you know, she could have been the first woman president. Then she married your dad. And then you came along and then let him money talk. I guess he thought I was feeling bad because he quick looked at me and he said, Oh, hey, I'm not saying she's not happy. She's happy. I'm just saying, I wonder how happy she would be if she really had a chance to fly as high as her wings would take her. And it made me think about my mom because I always think of her as the old lady in the cafeteria with a hairnet scooping up the macaroni and queso spoil the little kids. They're in the kitchen trying to roast the chilies over the flame. And I start thinking about all the times I walk into the living room and my mother would be standing in front of the television except the television wasn't on. And I would ask her what was she thinking. And she would jump like I scared her. And I would ask her again and she would say, oh, nothing. And I was wondering, if she thinks maybe her life is nothing. But her life isn't nothing, because if it wasn't for her, I'd be a pretty bad criminal, or I would have dropped out of school, and Poppy would be in jail for starting a fight with the wrong guy. But maybe saving a couple of loser men and cooking the best chili rellenos in the neighborhood seems like nothing to a woman with a brain as sharp as a razor blade. That's when I decided, I'm not gonna ask Lupe to marry me till after she finishes college. And I'll try to go with her. But if she gets accepted in one of those rich schools, I'll say, go ahead, be a doctor, open your wings and fly. And I'll try to go to NMSU, and I'll get a job, and I'll make a nice house. So when Lupe gets done flying, she'll have a place to make a nest if she wants to. And who knows? Maybe I'll do a little flying myself. OK, that's all I'm going to say, because I talk too much. It makes me dizzy. But thank you for coming to support the theater and listen to my story. Gracias.